Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, our Monday evening connection. And uh, obviously, we are uh, tonight in a beautiful digital gallery downtown in Bowery. It's time to be happy gallery. So we are very happy to be host by Ben, uh, my friend. And uh, so as we say, and again, welcome for the new people who, who join us today. Um, what do we do? What do we do first? Is this class is about consciousness. And consciousness is not something that you can teach. It's something you can gain as you accumulate enough information, enough understanding, and enough uh, connection to a wisdom. Eventually, it becomes part of your consciousness. Now, what is consciousness? One important aspect of consciousness is important to, un to understand according to Kabbalah. Consciousness is one thought that touches and influences all aspects of your life. It's not consciousness if it's just one area of my life is affected by that. Oh, at work, I'm so good. I have the right consciousness. Oh, with relationship or with this or with that. We all have fragmented consciousness. It's not yet a complete consciousness if that understanding or that wisdom doesn't influence all your life. Does that make sense to everybody? So just to, to keep in mind, when we're building consciousness, it's something that goes with you everywhere, all the time. It's not, ah, oh, what, what a nice thoughts. A very interesting idea. That's not consciousness. So what we do every week, we adding and we revealing more wisdom, obviously from the depth of Kabbalah. And eventually whoever take it home and bring it to his life and start using it, that person uh, become uh, we call aware or conscious of that particular wisdom. Where do we bring the wisdom from? First, it's too important. There is one document that is a lot of misconception about it. And it, we call the five books of Moses or the Torah. Now, people think it's belonging to the Jewish people or it's, it's a Jewish thing. No. The Torah is a vehicle. The Torah comes from the word Hora'ah. It's a path. It shows us where to go. It shows us what this world is all about. Yeah, there's many variations of that throughout the years, and, 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 and that's fine. But the one important point that I want to make about it is many, many Kabbalists explain through thousands of years that whoever take that story literal, it says actually more. Not even one word or letter in the Torah, the Bible, the five books of Moses is as it seems. And he says, for the people who actually, I mean, many, many Kabbalists speaks very, very much uh, not as positive of people who take the, that story literal and thinking, what a nice historical document, you know. And based on that, many people, you know, claim uh, such and such uh, 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 understanding or who we are because it's been given to us or be given to this. Uh, stories that are not real this story that we're talking about and again slowly if you study that enough you're gonna realize it's all code that's been given to us to our lives all code that's been given to us is how to lead your life to success without side effects because we all sometimes have high have greatness have something manifest you know but it's yet comes with many other outcomes or many different effects that we don't like or many, I like to call it side effects, you know? What we would like to receive is the wisdom, the connection, what we call the light, the energy, without side effects, okay? Like you, please welcome. So as, as, as we learn, is there uh, some people joining us? Welcome. Thank you. So how how do we how do we study? Please join us. How do we study? 
the study goes, the study of Kabbalah goes uh, in steps and slowly. Whoever tried to really get the wisdom fast, that's how fast they leave the wisdom. If you, if you work on yourself, and if you take the time to study this wisdom, slowly, slowly it becomes part of you. So anything you learn, take the time to go through it two, three, or four times. And that's why we're recording it, so you will have it for later on. This week, there's a particular story that no one, specifically women, won't like it. I don't like it if you read it literally. It's really bad. And I really don't know how people for thousands of years reading that story and actually submitting themselves to this type of religion. How is it possible? How is it possible that it is still a thing when you read literally? That's why I said never take anything literal when, when it comes to the wisdom. Nothing is, when you look at people, you see just the body, right? But do you know there is a story to that individual? You know there is a soul to that person. You know there is some depth, depth to this person. And you cannot know just by looking. Therefore, that's why when, when people getting into the, uh, uh, to the wisdom, it cannot be taken literally. So let's understand how it works. And I show you how this week's energy that revealed to us. Uh, can we? Uh, yeah. So, how this week's energy can influence and change my life. Now, reminding you, we are a few weeks before what we call Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, it's what we call, many people think is the new year, it's uh, the Jewish holiday, nothing to do with that. It's the birth of Adam and Eve. That's what it is. That's the day that they are born which means indicating it's the birth of humanity. All human beings receive a renewed and complete renewed light and energy that they will need for one particular, that particular year. So let's understand that for everyone, this, this, this occasion that comes to us in three weeks is for humanity. It's a complete opportunity for each one of us to receive a renewed connection, a renewed, what we call vessel, to use for embedment of the world, our life, and, and people. What is the indication that you will receive a new vessel and not simply taking the cassette and putting back the cassette? We don't have cassette anymore, but uh, the USB. But so they know it's a cloud, but today it's like a, <laughs> you don't even have that. Virtual, whatever you're going to call it. So it's like the movie came out of the video set or whatever. There's no video anymore, right? Anyway, you take it out and you put it back again, the same video, the same cassette. We don't want that. And if there is a chance that you can shift your story, the movie, the script of your life in three weeks, I would recommend do whatever it takes to set yourself to success. If there is a chance, maybe I'm completely lying to you, okay? Maybe, but don't believe me. Check it out. This is a huge opportunity. What do I want each one of us to receive and prepare for Rosh Hashanah? Many people think it's about a situation that's happening that you go and you ask God, God, give me more money, give me success, give me life. For another year. That is the problem. The problem is that it's in Rosh Hashanah, it's the effect, it's the result of how you show up in this month prior to it. For example, let's say you're getting married in three weeks, right? What would you do? You come to the marriage to the wedding dirty, disgusting, depressed, angry. Oh, you're going to be in the best place. You're going you're gonna, to uh, lose weight. You're going to clean up. You're going to come fresh. You're going to come energized. You're going to come powerful. That's how you're going to come. No? Is this correct to say? Many people coming to Rosh Hashanah are like, oh, please, God, give me a little bit. What do you mean? What vessel you bringing 
so I can fill it up for you. That's what Rosh Hashanah is about. Bring as big as as vessel as you can. I want to give you many blessings, not a little bit. Everything. So first is this few weeks. For whatever reason we met today, please ask for everything. Because less than everything, you're going to get nothing. Why? Very simple. Light cannot be fragmented, cannot be divided. Oh, I just need this to solve that problem. Light, energy cannot be fragmented. It's all or nothing. When, when the light is on in this room, does it separate between you? No. Even if you are negative or positive, rich, poor, beautiful, or ugly, you still under the light. It makes no difference. So when I'm saying to you, there is no some kind of God who playing games with us or creator or, or, or light or energy or universe that is have a favor, right? Maybe in your family, you are the favorite child, but that doesn't exist with this universe. And the universe want to give to everyone everything endlessly. That's the consciousness. What can I prepare this week? Next week, more and more secrets. But what can I prepare this week that can set me up for success. Now, this is so simple and beautiful. This week's portion, this week's energy, the literal story says this. The literal story, story says this. Please do not get offended with the literal translation. Okay? I'm, I'm telling you. I, I already did it many, many times. He says, Ki when or if you're going out to a war, right? You're going out to a war on your enemy. First of all, how is it relevant to my life? Anybody goes to war? Anybody have many enemies? We don't really waking up to a war, at least in New York. You know, there's other regions and places in the world that really they're waking up for a war. But in our day, so what is, it's not relevant for me. And then he says, and you see a beautiful woman, you take her, you take her to your home. If you want to marry her, you can take her and marry her. I was already offending. Sorry, sorry. Okay. I'm apologizing in the name of the, the story. But I'm, I'm really cutting it very, very short because it's really brutal. But I will explain everything and you're going to see the beauty of that, okay? And then you bring her to your home. And if you like her, if you like her, if you desire her, you take her to your home. And you shave her head. And you cut her nails. And you put her for 30 days to sit in your home. You take her dress that she was wearing before and you give her new, something new to wear again. And let me tell you more, okay? More offensive stuff. <laughs> it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. <laughs> and then he says, if you want another woman, you, sh you can take another woman. And you should have two women one that you love, one that you hate. That's the instruction. Can you imagine? If you have the woman from the, the side of the, hate, the hateful woman, you have a child with her, it's going to be Ben Soer, who is going to be a bad kid. And if you're going to have a one that you love, you're going to have another child. Again, the story goes on and on really very much low and low and low to a place like I don't want to even see in what's written here. Now listen, this is what got me away from this, from all this religion as growing up. But with a great Mary that I find the wisdom of Kabbalah and dive deeper into it and really open my eyes to see how we got completely wrong that information. First of all, the war. There is, and there will never be, even though you see in front of you and you've been, and I've been in war, okay? There is no external war. 
external war, war out there in the world, even now in Israel, in Ukraine, in Sudan, in anywhere there is war, it's the war that started, first of all, in the mind of people, then translated as external war. The war that we're talking about, and again, this is the instruction Moses gave all the Israel before the entering to the land of Israel to tell them that eventually this is the future leader. This is the future people that we need to develop. People that go to war every day. Benjamin, you told me two seconds ago there's no war. Yes, there is a war. And, I and, I and I'll share with you a quick word about it. I'll show you. When you wake up in the morning, when you wake, when eventually you wake up in the morning, okay, what is the first thing you do? So I'll think about it for a second. Before bathroom and all of that, what do we do? We have a game, right? No, everyone have a game with the snooze button, right? <laughs> you know the the best friends of yours, right? Oh, thank God. Sometimes when you have an important meeting, the 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 alarm is your best friend. But when it's not an important day or meeting, the alarm is so annoying. Does that make sense to you? It becomes your enemy. So think about it. You wake up in the morning, there was already struggle. Who is going to put you down? You or the thought, stay sleeping. You just need to listen to that voice and obey that voice. You lost the world. That is the world. The morning, yeah, and it continue. Who will rule the day? You or your negative side? There is in each one of us, they call it the Yetzer Ara, the evil inclination. Now, anybody here wakes up in the morning and want to be evil? You wake up in the morning and say, I want to destroy the world. I want to help, I want to hurt people today. Nobody does it. But eventually you do because you're not winning the war this war over your consciousness this is the first war that you need to understand is the only war that exists in this world who will rule your soul or your body consciousness your soul or your body consciousness what is body consciousness the laziness the body the needy the me the, 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 I'm tired, I'm hungry, all of that controlling us, right? So now, first of all, we need to remind ourselves there is, and the message is, Ki tetzela milchama. It says even, even if you declare a war against your negative side, you already won. Just by declaring a war, you already won the war. Untano Hashem beyadecha. He says, whoever wake up in the morning and dictate a war against their selfishness, their laziness, even just laziness, my dear. We all big lazy people or mature lazy people because otherwise you will never be depressed. Uh, never. A lazy person always sub, sub, subdue or, or can fall into depression. Now, again, depression or blaming or complaining, but that is a result of laziness. So let's say we dictate war over laziness. You wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to war against you. The creator hands you the negative side in your hand. Right away, just by declaring, I am at war against my negative side. You're not supposed to completely defeat your negative side, but it's what we call it in Kabbalah, your opponent, your opposer. And what is it? Nothing to do externally. It's something that you hear internally. Is that correct to say? Everybody hear the voice inside of them? You hear voices? That's the only war. Who is going to control you or the noise in your head? That's the first understanding that we want to have. Now, there's a problem over here. There's a problem. What is the problem? 
most people eventually at some point says, you know what? Okay, I'm done with these negative thoughts. I'm done with this laziness. I'm done with giving excuses. I'm done with, with complaining and blaming. I'm done with it. And you know what? We are good for 20 days. And we think, you know what? Oh, have you ever had, okay, in the month of September, no alcohol. January without carbs. Have you tried that? Whatever. People coming up with like nonsense of like 30 days not speaking bad on anybody. Right? Anybody did uh, 20 days not gossip? The second you said it, that was already gossip. That was already. Two seconds later you fall, right? But let's say, you know what the problem with that? The problem is we're deciding for 20 days not to do something or to do a certain thing. Your negative side will say, go ahead. I'm giving you a pass. And you think you're defeated. You think you're strong. You think you've done a, you, 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 you know, you turn a corner. He allow you to win the battle. He's going to win the war. Unless you decide completely to change a direction of your life. But for good, that is a war. A war has been never won. It's not about, okay, sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose the battle. But when we're dictating a war against our negative side, is for 365 days. Next year, we re-decide again. But you have to make the decision. If you do want to make a decision, it's for the entire year. That's the first understanding and the first solution. I will say it again. Whoever wakes up and want to dictate or decide I'm going to war against my negative side, you have to remember that the decision has to be for a full year. If you go and you say, you know what, I'm going to try for 20 days, I'm going to do 30 days fasting, I'm going to do, you know, uh, 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 no uh, alcohol, no carbs, your negative side is hearing you and he will allow you to do that. That's what you've done the whole year. Okay, I'm stopping for 10 days. I'm doing Vipassana. After you finish not talking, then you keep blah, blah, blah with everybody about everything. Every time you're going to do that, you see the falling is even worse. Because we're doing that peri periodically. The negative side allows us to do that. That's what you can. So please, as a suggestion, for this coming Rosh Hashanah, and it doesn't mean that you have to change completely everything, but whatever you decide to work on, I suggest to work on for 365 days. That's the first suggestion, suggestion as, as a, and a gift. Then let's talk about the woman, right? If you go out to the war, the creator will hand you your negative side. We understand the war is not external, but internal. Then he says, and then you're going to see a beautiful woman in, in, in captivity, right? Let's understand. In Kabbalah, we learn that each one of us have a female and male energy. Each one of us have these two energies. One is I want to receive. The other is, I want to give. Do we have it? Yes or no? You feel it. You get it. The receiving, called the female energy, energy. It's not a woman. It's not a man. Right? Is woman, uh, do you find women that want to go and get it? Go do it? Yes or no? Right? It's not like all women sitting there waiting. Right? They want to do it. They're a doer. They're, let's produce. Let's, let's get it done, you know? It's the, it's, the, it's the vessel and the light within each one of us. It's the right column and the left column. Right column is a male, left column is female. Like in electricity, you have plus, you have minus. Minus is not bad. Without the minus, light cannot be turned on. So it's simply a technology that is, in, is within us. Simply. The woman and the man is... 
meaning physically looks different, but the energy is the same thing. Right column, left column, we operating as the vessel and the leg. Now, we have also what we learned before, body and a soul, okay? Our soul will be the right column, the body will be the left column, which is the receiver, right? And continue in this way. So now, what is the conversation is all about? When a person goes to war, now you see how we open it for a completely different conversation. When you go, when you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm going to go to a war against my negative side, then what happening? When you see a beautiful woman, then you're going to see who you are. If you're not, your negative side hides it, you hides around, you're so bad, you're so miserable, nobody likes you, you're going to be alone. All of this, this garbage that is bombarding us with, right? You can't, if you're not going to war, you're not going to be able to see how beautiful you are, not physically, not externally, your soul level. What you came to do in this world is so beautiful and so elevated, but you were never going to be experiencing that if you're going through and with your negative side. Your evil inclination will never let you see it because once you see it, you will never stop the war. But if you decide to go to war against your evil inclination, then you'll be exposed to see the you see the beauty of your soul and you will be fascinated by that. Then, <clears throat> Few things that is important to understand here. It says that that um, that uh, um, I need at least once I see it, once I understand that my soul is the beautiful woman, meaning the vessel, the beautiful vessel that we receive. Now I need to ask for it. I need to ask for it every day. And plus, if you want, in Rosh Hashanah, in that time, in that moment, there is a cosmic opening. You need to ask to see that beauty of yourself. Then, when you see the woman in captivity, what does it mean? If you would see that you are captive of your own negative thoughts, you are captive of your own negative behavior. You are captive on your own, of your own ego. Nobody put you in captivity. Nobody controlling you. There is no God who doesn't want to give you your soulmate or, or success. There's endless abundance. There's endless light. There's endless success around us. But like I said many, many times, how many times I said it, that there is a saying that the rich get richer and the poor have you heard that before? And everybody agreed to that sentence. What do you mean? What type of God gives to the rich more money and to the poor make them more poor? Is there a system like that? that that's what people live in life like. No, it's consciousness of poor and it's consciousness of abundance. That's what it is. If you connect to conscious of abundance, endless abundance, you start generating abundance. If you connect it to poorness, oh, I'm not going to have and stingy and, and afraid for, not saying not to save or not to be, uh, to be care, careful with the money, but the consciousness is important to awaken here. So in this year, I would suggest to ask to see the beauty of your soul. What am I here for? What do I come to this world to do? What is my purpose here? Ask this. <clears throat> and then you can see Beshivya. And then you see that your soul is in captivity of all this smallness of thinking, all this miserable thinking, all this miserable talk that you have on yourself. What about me? Who is going to think about me? All of this conversation put your soul in captivity. And therefore... What is the idea of Simlat Shivya? She wearing a dress while she was in captive. Our soul dress up with the negativity that we putting on it. And therefore, <clears throat> when you remove the negative, when you remove the negative talk, the negative conversation, the victimhood around, what left? 
Now you need to add new thing, new type of thinking, new way of, of communication, new way of waking up in the morning, new way of eating, new way of speaking, new, new wisdom to your life. But it's not enough just to remove, you know, like any addict. You know, we help a lot of as well in, in addicts, you know. You know, the drug addict, you can't take them off the drug without giving them substance. You know, you know, you know that, right? There's all kind of all kind of substance. Why? Because the down is very hard. So it's important to remember that when I remove the negativity, I stop do that. It's not enough. You need to add something to fill up the space with beauty and with love. Okay? So it's very important as preparation to awaken, to attract ourselves to a complete different uh, uh, level. How? Look this week to all the engagement that I had with the negative side, to all the engagement that I have in a temporary way. 10 days this, five days. We all succeeding in that, but it's not enough. It doesn't do the work. How many of you usually, when you're in a relationship, you're in your best behavior until you finish the period of time of, uh, you know, the honeymoon time, you know what I'm talking about? Then the beast comes out. Yes, yes, you with me? You, we all do that. Huh? Don't pretend. We know when the beast comes out, they're going to get it from you. Meanwhile, you're in your best behavior. I'm so spiritual, I'm so beautiful, I'm looking good, and then rah, the enemy comes at a certain point, at a certain point, okay? And then I can't bring it back. Apologize. Let's not live our life this way. Let's not live in disguise. Let's not live in a way of a complete blinder or uh, I call fake. Let's be real. And real is love, is care. You are amazing. And step up to that plate is this opportunity in, in, in Rosh Hashanah. Then, I had the water over here. <clears throat> Next. <clears throat> then he says, you have to be passionate about her. What is her? Your soul. Our soul work with us when we passionate. When you when you do like when anybody here have a job, you know how you do your job when you like miserably doing your job. Okay, going to the office and do this, or when you're passionate about what you're doing, right? Uh, me, I'm passionate about what I'm doing. That's why I'm screaming and yelling and doing all of those uh, commotion, right? Because I don't know how to contain myself sometimes. With this wisdom. So imagine I will teach this wisdom. It's like, oh, it's so boring. I'll teach you in a very boring way, right? It's complete different light. It's complete different interaction. So first, your soul want to know that you are passionate about connecting to a soul. Because that is what's the point. That you come with love, that you come with care, that you come with compassion, when you come with that energy. I want to be. So it says, the you need to awaken compassion and desire to be part, to work with your soul, not with your body consciousness. This is the war we're talking about, and this is prior to Rosh Hashanah. We have to finish that heart of us. Next week and the following two weeks, we have different things we're going to work on. Okay, but here is you have to be dictating a war against your body consciousness and desire and connecting to your soul and to its greatness and beauty. That is Chashak Taba. That is when you awaken that. And then you says, it's not important, uh, uh, it's not enough to desire at once, but you need to, he says, to marry her. Marry, it meaning to commit, to be committed for an entire year to live your life this way. Even if you're going to fall, even if you're going to skip, even if you're going to, you know, uh, doing it, and then you're going to be having a down day or, or here or there, get up, stand up and do it again. But please, it's not enough 
you have to add the component of commitment. I'm committed. And if you can share with somebody as well, it's also good. Then <clears throat> it says the Astai Tsipona, she has to do her nail. It's weird, right? But you should know it's a code. It's really just a code. For what? The first Adam and Eve. Have you heard Adam and Eve? Their entire body and their entire connection was to plug into what we call the tree of life. There is a tree of life, which is endless and beauty and elevation, or the tree of knowledge, good and bad, which is all we all living our life like that, right? When you connect it to your ego, it's always true or uh, good and bad, right? One day is good, one day is bad. I'm not sure if it's going to be success. I love them, but I hate them, right? You have those every day. That's what we're all about. I can make it. I'm not sure. Would you like to go to the party? Yes. Let me see. Okay. Always. Boom. If you pay attention, you see how we are always in between. We never go for it. It's rare when somebody gives you an opportunity and says, yes, I'm there. It's rare. It's rare unless you really, really want it or you're really waiting for it. Okay. But majority of the time is, uh, you know, you want to go for a date? I'm not sure. Let me see. You want to go? You want to get married? I'm not, I don't know anymore. This is the reality that we wiping this year. In Rosh Hashanah, I want each one of us to really desire to be in the tree of life. Always going up. Always propelling up. Always increasing more. Never less. Never less. Always more. That is the consciousness we want to have. And then he says, the Astai you cut the nail. What does it mean? Oh, sorry, sorry, don't cut the nail. It's like when you uh, when you fire, when you make your nails beautiful, everybody likes that, right? Why? Women have it more than men. Okay, let's be honest. Yeah, I, I like the, 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 but yes or no, it's okay? Okay, okay. Why? Because women are way more elevated than men. Naturally, naturally, they are more connected. You tell them spirituality, they they getting it. Like volunteering, I have many, many more, more women than men want to volunteer. Naturally, they are like, boom, they are there. Why? They have a closeness connection to the tree of life, to the Garden of Eden, than, than, than men. Therefore, the nails, if you know, it's the skin of Adam and Eve. That's used to be the whole body was that. It's an immortal. You know, when a person died, you know, the nail keeps growing. You know that. You should know that at least. The nail keeps growing because they are still connected to the tree of life. They're connected to what we call immortality. Right? So therefore, everybody is concerned with the nails. Right? What does it mean here? It tells you. In this week, you want to always desire to be connected to the tree of, uh, to the tree of life. I want to stop this year with the I know, I don't know, the unknown. I want to be in the known. I want to be in the certainty. I want to be in the love. I don't want to be in the doubt. I don't want to be in the fear. And that is the idea of what he says here, the connection to the nail, he says, is that a person needs to awaken a connection to the tree of life, meaning to be in a constant connection, not temporary, in a lasting, not fragmented. And therefore, this week, another thing I would like you to observe is to take responsibility to all the time that we were disconnected from what we call tree of life, from the from life that we want to live. Because, oh, they didn't give me opportunity or blaming somebody for your fall, for your falling, or finding force in others, and why not? Be in the why, yes, not in why not. Being the go, not is I'm waiting all day long until the opportunity. How many of us heard ourselves saying, I'm waiting for the right opportunity? You're never going to have the opportunity. It's a code. When you're saying that, you're telling the, the universe, I don't want. Because whoever wants opportunity, make the opportunity. Open the opportunity, not waiting and oh, where is it going to come from? 
I'm opening the opportunity. I'm creating it. Very important consciousness to have for that entire year. And this is all the idea of, of the nails. And then, <clears throat> why it says, and then when, when the person taking her 30 days home to his home, what does it mean? And she has to cry and weep about her father. She, he took her for her, father, for her father's home. What does it mean? Crazy, right? It's the 30 days prior to the Rosh Hashanah. It's called the month of Virgo. The month of what we call Tshuva. The month of change. The month of transformation. The month that you can become Bria Hadasha, A complete new being. Reminding you, you're not coming to Rosh Hashanah. Whoever is here and my friends, I know you're there listening. Do not come to Rosh Hashanah. I'm expecting, God, give me all. Oh, That's why people stop doing it. Because they go every year and nobody listens to them. Of course, no. People go and ask, and I get, oh, I need more money, I need more children. They are the three things you get in Rosh Hashanah. Children, money, and life, right? So you will get 365 days to live this year. But what type of days, right? Children represent, obviously, marriage, uh, soulmate, and all of that, and kids. But it's outcomes. You will have outcomes in your business. You open another branch. In how you you have outcome, you have students, you have you have employees, you're gonna have many, many that's because you'll be kids, meaning growth and transformation and money, right? <clears throat> money is dictated in Roshana for the entire year. How much you're gonna have based on your consciousness and how much you're going to do with that. <clears throat> so many people come and ask, and they never get because you already need to become who you want to become. Now, not in Rosh Hashanah, come is an actualization of who you are. So you, this is the 30 days that it's talking about. 30 days, the month of Virgo. That's what we know. Why? Why? What is the the, the symbol for the month of Virgo? Hmm? Anybody know the astrological sign for Virgo? Virgin. It's the Virgin. That's why it's called Virgin Virgo. It's the virgin. What does it mean? Pure. You need already to become pure in this month, clean in this month, already. Then you come to Rosh Hashanah. Oh my God, you set yourself to success that you never can imagine. Many people think, I need to be smart. I need to be in the right place in the right time. I need to know the right people. I have to have the right education. I have to have the money to invest in business and all of that. No. You need to do this work for 30 days. And show up to Rosh Hashanah, and every door will be open for you this year. It's never meant to be that we're going to work. By the way, it's never written that we need to have a job and go work and do stuff, you know. No, we can to just completely be fulfilled by that. But again, it's a longer, it's a different conversation, but please understand. We never meant to work that hard physically. And you know, and and work the land, and and go in uh, mining, and all of all of this, and trading, and all of that. No, we meant to enjoy, and the work will be done by consciousness. You have you heard the the, the saying, consciousness re creates reality. Have you heard that? Oh, your thoughts create reality. Have you heard it before? That's what it is. Everything you want, you want to food. You're thinking about it. It's right now. It's here. This is our power. Well, you want money, it's right here. Everything you need is not even a step further away from you. One step is too much. But we are going further and far, far away to get our food. Why? Because we are disconnected from who we are. We can disconnect it from our soul. We are under captivity of the, of the negative side, of our own doing. And this... If I can really give one person here, really get what, what is the opportunity, we can change the one person. Not too many, by the way. That's okay if, if all of us here don't get one person. That was worth it. You have to understand. It's the shift of consciousness that makes the difference. It's not about me now. Oh, I have an agenda. If I do Rosh Hashanah, maybe I can get more. No, 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 no. You are the blessings. 
You are the success. You are the abundance. But you're not connected to it because you put, you're under captivity. You you are captive of our own, our own negative side. So it says, that's the nail. And then he says, what? You remember what, what I asked you to do? Uh, shave the head. Remember shave the head? Shave the head. What does it represent? Once you go to war every day, you're going to get a shaved head. What is it? No, not like me. Okay? It's not yet. But hair represents thoughts. And most of us have and bombarded with so much negative thoughts. If you do this work in this month, you get a shaved head. What does it mean? All the old patterns of negative thoughts that comes to you are be white, are being clean. That's the idea of hair. Okay, that's why hair is like, if you know hair is like a pipe. If you ever look inside the hair, the microscope is exactly like a pipe that channel thoughts into your head, okay? So the head, the hair is not a problem. It's what you plug into, right? The antenna you plug into. In this month, you have the opportunity to completely shave your head. What does it mean? Shave all the negative thoughts, all the patterns of thinking. Happened to you before you were trying to go to sleep and you can't stop thinking? It's starting now. It's not, it, start, it started from last year. That's what it is. So if you interested in this work, it's a simply work of consciousness, taking responsibility, look inside and decide in a commitment to go to war against me, my own, my own enemy. The big picture about it is in order for us to connect to an elevated light, energy, creator, you need to earn it. You need to earn it by constant work. What do you mean earning? If you decide every day, if you have that consciousness to go to war every day, you earn it. Simply as that. I, I just don't want to take longer. I'm just going straight to the point. Every day of this coming year, after Rosh Hashanah, you decide, I'm going to war. If I wake up in the morning. Anybody likes to wake up in the morning and jump out of bed? Don't say it because it's a lie. It's not an easy thing in the winter even to get up of bed and jump and get inspired. Ah, it takes the time. You barely, somebody actually need to roll you out of bed, right? That's, that's most of majority of us. If you wake up and you dictate that war, you set yourself to such a success, but you also need to take this month until then to take responsibility on all you're doing, all you're doing that was manifest, that was inspired by your ego, that was dictated by your selfishness. This is what you want to take responsibility and change your way for this coming year. Once you do that, you set a complete different being to receive in, in three weeks or not. Last thing, last point is important, and then we'll, we have a short discussion. It says, or that I want to remind you, like I said, the war can be won when it's a long run, when it's a marathon, not when it's a sprint, okay? Last thing he says, you have the opportunity this week to erase the memory of all doubts and fear in your life. To erase all, imagine you wake up in the morning and you have no fear and no doubt about anything. Tell me, is it going to make you powerful or weaker? What do you think? Acknowledge it inside of you, right? And we know. A person with no fear, no doubt, nothing stands in their way. So here he says, every time you're about to do something, your negative side, doubting it. No, you know you're not going to do it. Yeah, you know it's not going to happen. You bind into it. Doubt about everything. Is it the right person? 
and you feel like, yeah, I want to go for it. And like, no, this is what we're dealing with. Prior to Rosh Hashanah, you don't come with doubt to this time. You don't bring the doubts and the fear from this year to next year. You don't. Cut it off. Done. Because you cannot defeat doubt with being smart. You cannot. You can be as smart as you want. You can be as, 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 as you know, because the, the, the Kabbalah says you can't win. Uh, 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 you can only defeat wind with wind, water with water, iron with iron. You can, you can battle there. The negative side, you cannot battle with any other things besides its own weapon, which is what? Laugh. Laugh over your negative side. Laugh at him. He cannot stand when you have something to do and he tells you, no, it's not going to happen, and you laugh about it. This happiness for no reason it's a, it's a it's a it's a remedy that your negative side can't stand and please i'm, I'm suggesting you to try it okay give it don't believe me please try it every time you have a little little doubt little fear laugh about it and start being happy for no reason and especially when things didn't go your way start this week a little bit and you will see that in no time, you won't believe it. It wiped. It disappeared. It's The cloud been removed. Please give it a try. Because, you know, uh, uh, when you said, I want to do this, or I want to be better, or I want to be great, your negative side put doubt. You know what he does? He laughs at you. <laughs> I know you're not going to do it. It's just a story you're saying to everybody, right? No. This time I'm serious, and if you're serious, laugh back because this is how you're defeating him. It's, it's really making us full. Your negative makes you feel full. So please, let's use the tools. Let's elevate ourselves. Take the opportunity that we have in the next three weeks. Again, if you would know that your life depended on that, I think you will be more serious about it. And at least this is what we want to awaken. And even if you don't do, or you don't attend, or any of that, please understand that October 2nd, October 2nd is it? I think it's October 2nd to the 5th. You have The cosmos is open. Please prepare yourself for that. Maybe if you don't attend anything, just know that that is happening in the universe, and you can ask for it. Okay? So, thank you for joining us, and um, We'll keep seeing you next week. Thank you.